My dog Lucy has been on an all meat diet for about nine months now. And today I'm gonna to show you what she'll be eating for the next month. If you've been here before, welcome back. And if you're new here, I am delighted to meet you. I'm a doctor of physical therapy and I've experienced so much healing on a carnivore diet. And I've basically put my dog on a carnivore diet for health reasons as well. Now she is thriving, she's happy, and she loves her food. This is what it looks like to prep her meals for the month. This month she'll be eating chicken leg quarters, ground beef, a ground organ blend, chicken feet, and a pork shoulder. Hold up, there were some last minute additions. I had to run to the grocery store for something and chicken was super marked down. So I bought some chicken thighs and some chicken breasts to add to the food that I already had. Everything is now prepped and ready to go and Lucy is swarming like a shark in chummy water. When I'm prepping for more than about one week at a time, I like to sit everything out like this and break it up into individual servings. It just makes it a lot easier to keep track of what I'm doing and what I need to feed her for each day. The thing in the metal bowl is the pork shoulder. Lucy would eat it raw, but I don't know why. My preference is to cook it and shred it. I separated the ground beef into half pound balls and broke the organ blend into 20 servings, which are also on the plate there in little balls. I basically just mix and match all the food into Ziploc bags so that I can keep track of how much and what I'm giving her each day. In the past, I've been really meticulous about measuring the exact weight of each day's food, but now I've done this so many times that I can basically just eyeball it. But if you're new at this, a good guideline is that dogs typically need two to 3% of their body weight in food each day. So if we use my dog Lucy as an example, she weighs 60 pounds. So two to 3% of 60 pounds would be 1.2 to 1.8 pounds. That's how much food she needs each day. If you convert that to ounces, she needs 19 to 29 ounces of food per day. Like I said, I don't really go out of my way to measure all that anymore, but when I did, I just used a standard food scale and that worked perfectly fine. Once you know how much food your dog needs, you can determine how many meals a day you want to feed them. You can feed them once a day or you can feed them over the course of two to three meals per day. I personally like to feed Lucy twice a day. Each day, AKA in each bag, I try to make sure that she's getting some meat with a bone and some boneless meat. Dogs typically need about 10% of their food from bone. Now I really have no idea how to gauge that. So I simply go by the consistency of her stools. Depending on the texture of her stools, I adjust. For example, if her stools are becoming loose, then I add bone. If they're becoming too hard, then I add fat. Lately, her stools have been a little more on the hard end of the spectrum, which is why I added pork shoulder to this month's menu and why I'm not removing the skin from the chicken. I have given Lucy cooked meat with bones in it before, but I understand that cooked bones can splinter and cause issues. Bones from raw meat, as long as they're big enough that the dog has to chew them up rather than swallowing them whole and choking on them, should be fine. Lucy has no trouble at all. Of course, she is a 60 pound Doberman, but I've heard of little Yorkies doing just fine with chicken leg quarters, so there you go. If for whatever reason you're not comfortable with feeding bones, or maybe it's just gonna take you a little time to build up to that, then you can purchase bone meal. I have some that I just got off Amazon, and it's fine, but it doesn't seem to bulk up her stools quite like actual bone does. You can see here that I'm about to use up my last ball of ground beef. So once I'm out of beef, I start putting the shredded pork in each bag. That way I'm not throwing off that bone ratio that we talked about. The chicken feet do add bone content, but those bones are so soft and collagenous that I, honestly, I barely count them as bone. Speaking of collagen, the leftover liquid from cooking the pork shoulder is really thick and gelatinous once it's cooled, which leads me to believe that it's a good source of protein, specifically collagen. So I'll often spoon that over Lucy's food and she loves it. Once my bags are all filled, I just smush everything down for easy storage and I zip it sealed. All of these foods freeze and thaw without any issue. Although sometimes I do include eggs, either boiled or raw, and they look really weird when they freeze and thaw, but Lucy still eats them just fine. Here are some tips for getting started if you're interested in doing this for your own dog. If the idea of raw meat is weird to you, start with cooked meat. 
that might actually help your dog adjust to the change as well. When Lucy and I first started, I cooked most of her meat, especially chicken, because raw chicken grossed me out. And then I would also cook the organs because that's the only way that Lucy would take them. She was very finicky at first. But over time, I got used to handling the raw meat and Lucy seemed to become less picky. So now most of her food is raw, which that definitely makes it less time consuming for me. Another tip for newbies is how to start the diet. You can definitely go cold turkey, which is what I did with Lucy, or you can ease in slowly. So one way you can ease in slowly is to start adding meat to your dog's kibble. And then each day you can add more meat and less kibble until it's all meat. You can do this every day. You can increase the meat content or every week. You can take it however fast or slow that you wanna go. And I was nervous that Lucy would have digestive upset from an immediate switch, but she really didn't. In fact, Lucy's digestive system is like mine in that she produces less waste on this diet than she did on her standard diet. She used to poop every day, but now it's more like once every two to three days, which means less poop bagging for me, and I am not complaining about that. This meal prep made 28 bags, so basically a whole month's worth of food. And I keep four to five bags in the fridge at a time and store the rest in the freezer until she's ready to eat them. I thaw them before feeding her, but I don't worry about warming it up or anything like that. She's not picky, at least not anymore. And she loves it, even cold. I'm pretty sure that mealtime is her new favorite time of day, which is not how she was when I used to feed her kibble. When it comes to treats, we do plain yogurt, hot dogs, and various carnivore dog treats that are on the market. And one of her favorites is these beef and liver sliders from Carnivore Crisps. I really love that I can feed her whole nutritious food. And then I also have lots of really awesome options for treats that are whole nutritious foods as well. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and follow me for more content on Carnivore Diet for Humans and Dogs.